Good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the senior strategist for WealthPress. Today is January 24th. It's a Tuesday, and it's 8.08 .08 in the morning. The market's going to gear up to open up in about an hour and 22 minutes. I'm a little bit earlier than usual, or maybe just a few minutes earlier, but I've got a lot to talk to you guys about. Now, notice the Dow Jones down about 97 uh, points, and NASDAQ's down 54. We, and uh, I've been telling you guys all year long, I've been talking about the Dow Jones, and I've been talking about how the Dow Jones needs to come down because it's above, it's trading mostly above the 200-day moving average, while the QQQ is trading well below the 200-day moving average, and the S&P is still below, but it's a little higher up. Well, since the beginning of the year, the QQQ has gained about 6%. The S&P has gained about 3%, give or take. And notice it's right at the 200-day line. Meanwhile, the Dow Jones, the, jo the Dow Jones gained 0.80 to 0.80%, less than 1%. So when I warned you in the beginning of the year that the Dow Jones is going to be having the biggest trouble going higher, I really meant it. And so far, the QQQ is up about eight times more than the Dow Jones, which is way, way, way too much, but it also shows you how much overbought the Dow Jones is compared to the QQQ and the S&P 500 because it's still trading above the 200-day moving average, where the NASDAQ is way, 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 way below. So something to just be mindful of. Now, we were almost, we were almost there. We went up to about 108.63. We were almost at 110. We're not there yet. If we go to the 110, I'm going to sell this uh, th the bond market, but we're not there yet. But I believe right at the 200-day would be a perfect time to sell it. Let's be patient. But if we do get to that level, I have an alert ready, and I will send you an email. But uh, we missed it by a by a point, a basis point, by a handle. Today, we've got PMI Composite and Richmond Fed, Fed Manufacturing Index. Most of the goodies start tomorrow with the petroleum report, but the real moths of the week, the real, real big reports are going to be the gdp durable goods new home sales and consumer sentiment and personal income obviously personal income i'm not too concerned about because the number has been below 200,000 now for quite some time now a few things that i'm paying attention to put the call ratio is all the way or came all the way down to 80 yesterday which means markets are not grossly oversold as they were that means they're now starting to become a little bit overbought uh, and that's danger zone and i'll tell you why as I showed you earlier, the S&P 500 is now reaching for the 200-day moving average. Now, we are, believe it or not, we are in a bear market. Look at the market right now. And any time, basically, here's what I'm trying to say. What I think is happening here is exactly the same thing that happened here. If you look at one of my templates, which you will see right now, you will see that the RSI levels are getting a little bit overbought just like they were here not crazy overbought we can i mean i'll switch to a five day it'll give you a better indication here you could see here see that that's overbought you see that that's overbought so whenever we reach these levels i'm very skeptical that we're going to continue moving higher especially in light of the fact that you've got 84 per 84 percent of communication sector trading above the uh the 50-day moving average consumer discretionary you've got 75 infotech you've got 86 let me just show you how overbought these are in the short term so you could see where i'm coming from and why i'm so nervous about this this darn market here let me just look at momentum levels over the last five years you see that that's technology right see my point Anytime we go up there, we tend to cool off. That's tech. Now look at uh, look at communication services. Same thing. So we got to be very, 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 very careful right now. Look at that. I mean, this is uh, what five years doesn't happen very often. So we're in a very crucial point, and this is internals. But when you turn that over and look at the technical chart, and you see that we're that we're trading right at the 200-day moving average and violating the 200-day moving average, you've got to be cautious. Now, so you've got momentum levels that are overbought, right? You've got the moving average overbought. Watch this. Look at the number of stocks making 20-day breakouts yesterday, 444. 
Now, anytime we get above 400, that typically means we peak out and go lower. Four, 500. Look at what happened about a week ago. Keep, keep your eye on that number. See that? 473, 487. And then, so look, 487, 473, 313, 115, 76. Then again, 300, 444. So I think this will maybe go up one more notch, maybe a little bit more, and then start coming down. The bottom line is I think we are grossly, grossly overbought in the very, very short term, which is another reason why the market is so choppy and stocks are having such a difficult time climbing directionally for more than two, three days. Now, a few things I want to talk about. Let's talk a little bit about the pre-market opening to see what you guys are expecting, what's on the table and the global markets. U.S. benchmark indices ended the regular session sharply higher yesterday after hopes, see the, 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 the magic word hopes, of a less aggressive Federal Reserve boosted sentiment with investors piling into market-leading momentum stocks ahead of a busy week of earnings. Uh, Monday's trading session, Qualcomm gained 6%. Advanced micro devices jumped 9%. Holy moly. After Barclays upgraded the stock, Western Digital climbed more than 8%. And Salesforce rose more than 3%. It was a big, big, big day for tech stocks. But I'm telling you, folks, follow through is a whole different story. There's a uh, Microsoft kicks off earnings today, and I'll talk about earnings, all the earnings today in a few minutes. But they, t they will uh, kick off the earnings season, the big, big tech earnings season. Analysts expect year-over-year -year earnings for the S&P to drop 3% now. It's not 2.8. It's 3% now compared to 1.6 at the beginning of the year. We have a 98.6% chance of a 0.25 basis point rate hike, which is pretty much baked into the market. And today we're looking at U.S. manufacturing preliminary data. Also, we're looking at U.S. service PMI data. Both of those reports are going to come out before the end of the day. Europe, Europe, investors are digesting the purchase managers survey results for the euro and the U.K., Christine Langard said on Monday European central banks would do everything necessary to return inflation to its 2% target, indicating more significant interest rate increases as coming meetings. So don't, don't expect anything to get that great in the, in the very, very short term in Europe. Nikkei uh, closed higher technology stocks. They're following the U.S. Even after preliminary reading showed the manufacturing PMI remained at its lowest levels in two years. Wow, that's bad. Remember, they have a lot of cars they're manufacturing. Pre-market movers, we got Xeon Bank dropping more than 3%. ADM fell more than 2% after a downgrade. But yesterday, ADM went up, uh, let's see here, ADM went up yesterday 9%. So things are just all over the board. We've got to be very, very careful. In terms of what's coming out today, Microsoft. You've got Microsoft reporting $2.30. You've got 3M, $2.40 reporting. Horton's reporting. Capital One is reporting. General Electric is reporting. Halliburton is reporting. Invesco's reporting. Johnson Johnson is reporting. Lockheed Martin's reporting. You've got a lot of Texas Instrument, RTX. I wanted to buy the stock the other day, but uh, earnings got in the way. Travelers, UNP, Verizon you got Western Alliance, just about everything. And then tomorrow we've got Tesla and we'll get into that later. But a lot of things to talk about. Now, as far as individual sectors are concerned, let me just go to individual sectors. And then I'll get into the strongest stock, weakest stock. So the strongest sector right now is energy, 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 energy. And the weakest sector is consumer staples and consumer discretionary. Now, I wouldn't be writing consumer dis consumer staples out just yet, and I'll show you why. If you look at momentum levels on consumer staples, they are starting to get really, really low. Let me show you. Really, really low. Look at that. That's, that's 10 years. Look at where we're at right now. Very, very low. So you got to be very careful. But meanwhile, meanwhile, if you look at consumer staples, the number of stocks trading above the 50-day line is 21, but above 200 is 36. As long as this is a higher number, it's still oversold, but as long as this is a higher number, we're in a better position. But um, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be throwing consumer staples out with the bathwater right now. While information technology is a little overbought, consumer discretionary is a little overbought, and communication services are a little bit overbought. 
and overall Nasdaq is reaching again for that 200 day moving average, I would be very, 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 very skeptical right now of a turnaround. So I would not be uh, selling consumer staples. I would be much more inclined to sell consumer discretionary in my personal humble opinion. In terms of the strongest stock, let's go through the strongest and weakest stocks. The strongest stocks, you've got a lot of good selection right now. Um, I like Marathon Oil. I like uh, VLO quite a bit. Uh, I like Exxon a lot. It's right now breaking out of the upside. I think it's a great stock. So right now, I just gave you several energy stocks that look really great. Cop, Exxon, uh, Marathon Petroleum, VLO, Oxy, they all are looking really, really good right now. And I like energy quite a bit right now, especially with the ETF, the energy ETF trading above the 50-day moving average, as you will see in a few minutes or a few seconds. See that? Above the 50-day, that's all-time high. Look at where we're at right now. It's looking really, really good. So any of these stocks would be perfect candidates. I, uh, Marathon, VLO, um, Exxon. I really like Exxon right now because it looks like it's going to break out a little higher. Now to the downside. Oh, boy. Let's talk a little bit to the downside. Oh, my two favorite stocks, Dish and Generac. Let's uh, look at some charts. Uh, Generac holding, I think it's going to go down. Dish, I believe, is going to come down to the 1250 level. Let's take a look at some real nasty stocks that look like they're going to go down. I think uh, VFC is going to cool off and come back down. Um, I think the VNO Realty Trust is going to come down. Uh, Baxter International, I think, is going to come down. Carnival, I think, is going to come down as well. So I would be looking at the consumer discretionary stocks right now. And uh, if I wanted to get a consumer discretionary stock to the downside, it would probably be CarMax or Carnival. Those two. Uh, I don't think this breakout that we're seeing right now is going to be very sustainable. And momentum levels are not behind it at all. And we have over 400 stocks trading above the 20-day uh, breakout. So the, the market's getting a little too top heavy. And remember, we're still in a bearish downtrend. That's big, 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 big. So I gave you the strongest stock. I gave you the weakest stocks. And I'm telling you right now, we have to be very, very cautious. Volatility is going to increase. Lower your exposure. Now, folks, inflation, interest rates, political turmoil, global destabilization. That's right, global destabilization. A storm is brewing. And it's going to tear the market in 2023. No, it won't be related to real estate, energy, or even crypto. But it's something that will show no mercy for traders. And if you're not prepared, your portfolio can get obliterated, destroyed, knocked out. Not pretty. Jeff Zaninari, he has a secret weapon. It's his 2023 financial hurricane battle plan. It's a 90-day market mission designed to help traders prepare for the coming storm. And he's holding a special presentation at 10 a.m. Eastern time today for a full reveal. You do not want to miss out. It's going to be very, very cool. I, when I looked at this, I said, Jeff, this is like this is going to like rocking them like a hurricane in 2023. It's the financial hurricane. Jeff is going to rock you like a hurricane. You know that song from the Scorpions? 2023 financial hurricane battle plan don't miss out follow the link 10 a.m eastern time tuesday if you don't know where the link is go to the youtube wealth press channel it's in there and i'll talk to you guys later make sure post comments follow the link below and and post comments and send me emails support at marketgeeks.com i'll see you soon be very very careful we're still trading in the nasdaq below the 200 day moving average the market's gone up 6% since the beginning of the year, and we're still below the 200-day moving average. If that's not a, uh, a sucker play, I don't know what is. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care and have a great, great day. And I'm always watching out for you. You can always send me an email, and I will respond. Bye.